So our next speaker is uh, Erdems Sarius, and he's going to talk about uh, high kicker constructions from dense subgraphs, and the keyword is fast. Hello, everyone. I am Erdem from University of Buffalo. And this is our joint work with my postdoc mentor, Ali Pinar from Sandia Labs. Before starting, this paper is actually from last year's VLDB. Uh, but since I couldn't make it to Germany due to some visa issues, uh, PC chairs kindly moved my talk to here. And I appreciate that. I really like the uh, database community in general for their uh, offer, actually. So we all love graphs, and we are, we are basically why here, and uh, they are basically the language to model so many complex phenomena in the nature, uh, ranging from social networks, information networks, routers, or the protein interaction networks, and more biological stuff in our cells. In this work, our focus is on dense subgraph discovery, and what I mean by dense is some kind of measure of connectedness on edges. So throughout the entire work, we have just one metric, which is the number of edges over number of all possible, which is basically one for a click like this. And the interesting thing about real world networks is that they are globally sparse, but locally dense. And if you just check the local uh, properties of certain vertices and edges, you are likely to find meaningful structures just pointed in the previous talk. So our aim here is basically finding many non-trivial subgraphs. Non-trivial means uh, large sizes with high density, and we also want to construct the relationships among them in a hierarchical way. Uh, that might sound very similar to clustering or community detection problem. The difference is we are here interested in the absolute density, not the relative one. Most of the time, they are very similar structures, but uh, I just want to make it clear that it's not a community detection problem. So, then subgraphs matter in many applications. A few examples here. Spending farms are detected by finding the dense structures, almost click-like uh, regions. Or it has been used for detecting real-time stories uh, by watching the TV stream. Also, it has been used for uh, system throughput improve improvements uh, for online social networks, and also the graph visualization is one of the key application areas for that. So our work is actually based on a, on a novel algorithmic framework, and I will give some background on that first. Uh, so basically, K-core and K-trust decompositions are effective algorithms which gives you dense subgraphs and also the hierarchical relations among them. To define it, k-core is uh, a subgraph where every vertex has at least k edges. And the, for that graph, I have like one, the entire graph is a two-core, and the blue region is a three-core. So the, here, the hierarchy is not that interesting, but just a single chain. k is a very similar concept, but it is talking about every edge and the, their triangle counts. So every edge should be involved in at least k triangles. For the same graph, I draw the trusses here, and as you see, they are nested, there are nested trusses into each other, and the entire thing is a zero truss, and the, it has two children and the one more leaf at the bottom. So those are uh, quite useful and the quite popular algorithms for uh, graph analytics, uh, and the, there are, I think there will be some other papers mentioning about the K-core decomposition. So the thing is, uh, in, an, in an earlier work, we make, we, make, we make the observation that the k truss is actually k-core on the edge triangle graph. What I mean is, if you draw the bipartite graph of edges and triangles like this, and they check their degrees, you can basically simulate k truss decomposition by a k-core decomposition on that bipartite graph. One important thing is it's not a binary relation, so you have three edges in a triangle, you need to uh, watch that, but at the end, it's basically the same thing. So building upon that observation, we 
Op the obvious thing is to go, why not generalize it? Uh, so our nucleus decomposition uh, framework basically generalizes all those stuff. We say there is like R click and S click where R is less than S. And we define the K RS nucleus as where every R click takes part in at least K number of S clicks. That might sound uh, complicated, but if you just put R is one and S is two, it is exactly the K core. And for two and three, it is almost k -tras. Actually, it's something stronger than k -tras. Here we have some triangle connectivity condition. For instance, here A and B are triangle connected, but A and C are not. I think you get the idea. So how do we compute those? There is a very nice algorithmic uh, methodology for that, known as peeling algorithm. Uh, you basically start from a degrees of a vertex or triangle counts of an edge, and the start from the minimum degree vertex and assign the core number and then decrease the neighbor, neighbor degrees and you go until all the vertices are pro, uh, processed. So the thing is, uh, in the literature, all the people doing K-core decomposition are basically finding those core numbers. But the important thing here, the really important thing here it is about the hierarchy and actual subgraphs. So we basically explored how can we compute the hierarchy by given, by given the core numbers of, a, uh, of the vertices and also can we generalize this for truss or other nucleus decompositions. At that moment, I want to revisit those definitions, the first basic definitions in the history. So the K-core is introduced in 1983 by different people, interestingly. This was a journal of ACM and this was some social networks journal. And it is defined as the maximal connected subgraph with minimum degree of K. So this is something important. Any K-core should be connected. That's what we need to understand here. For the trust, it has been independently proposed by so many people under so many names, and the connectivity constraints were all, were all different. For instance, for that given graph, uh, K dense and triangle K core definitions just says, okay, the entire thing is a K trust. The middle two basically says that let's just uh, watch the regular connectivity. So there are like two part, uh, two trusses there. And the K-TRAS community and the, our K2 trinucleus definition basically watch for the triangle connectedness, which is a stronger connectivity condition. So the, overall, the challenge is, given these numbers, how can we infer that hierarchy? Uh, here you see the entire graph is a one core, and the all but A is a two core, and there are two, three cores in the bottom. And for instance, C and D are away from each other, but they are in the same K core. So how can we construct the hierarchy and how can we do it in a uh, cheap, cheap way? Not that when you go to higher orders, edges, triangles, four clicks, these traversal operations will be much costlier. You basically need to jump from one edge to another by finding a common triangle and uh, it is costly. So what we did is basically adapted the union find algorithm for multiple levels and the merged the disjoint trees and the, had the hierarchy tree at the end. One important definition uh, is the subnucleus. I think it has been introduced under different names for core decomposition as well. This is basically the maximal union of arc clicks with equal K value. Uh, and the connectivity constraint is also there by s clicks. And what we do is we just find those cores in decreasing order of their k values and construct some skeleton by union find structure, which will easily let us to reach the real hierarchy. Example here, uh, all those rectangles are subnuclei. So for instance, the entire graph is a four core and the, there are multiple five cores and the six cores there. Given that structure, I can construct that skeleton here 
by basically starting from the larger score number and the watching the Nick burst with the larger k value uh, and the putting some parent child relationships to get this at the end. So, one other thing that we asked is we still do traversal. I mean, even if it is only one traversal, it is a costly operation and the, um, un unaffordable for higher orders. Can we do that without traversal? And the Thinking about that peeling algorithm again, here is the pseudocode for that. So what we do is at each step, we find the vertex with the minimum degree, assign its core number, then check its neighbors, and decrement their degrees if they have a like, larger degree. But we just do that if, we just do this. If, for instance, the neighbor degree is same or less than the, uh, k value at the current iteration, we don't do anything. So the, our idea was basically we can make use of that condition. For instance here, I have a toy graph and the, let's say those black numbers are degrees and the blue ones are k values. And at that moment I computed the core number of this one and I am processing vertex B. Here basically vertex B can infer that Okay, I am in the same subnucleus with A, and also subnucleus of C is a neighbor to mine. And bookkeeping those relationships and the, uh, in an efficient manner, and then doing the post processing, uh, a cheap post processing, will give you the uh, hierarchical, in, entire hierarchical structure. And this algorithmic framework uh, is basically applicable for any R and S values. So some experiments to show how fast is that. So there is one great work in the literature known as the TCP index. Uh, this is the work that introduced the K-trust community to triangle connectedness. And the idea was using the spanning tree indices to speed up the triangle-based traversal. And that was one of our baselines here. The DF DFT is this joint force traversal, the only the application of union find. And the FND is the one that has avoiding the traversal as well. And also, we did something hypothetical. Let's say we find the K values, and we did one traversal, and without finding anything. I mean, just a single traversal over vertices, edges, or whatever. And here the results for 2, 3, and 3, 4. Uh, overall, the F, uh, FND is, of course, faster than the DFD, also faster than the TCP algorithm uh, for 2, 3 case. And the interesting thing is, without doing the traversal, we basically beat the hypothetical runtime that can be achieved that can be achieved by the traverse algorithm in the in the best case so that was important we are like 1.3 times faster than that and 1.5 times faster in the 3 4 uh, decomposition case so those are the results to compare the uh, to basically show the impact of avoiding the traversal so this top one is 2 3 and this is 3 4 what we compared is the left bars are uh, the DFT and the right bars are with the, avoiding the traversal. And we basically get rid of, of those red bars which basically corresponds to the traversals. So most of, for most of the graphs in the 3-4 nuclei case, we basically uh, reduced the half time, uh, reduced runtime by half. And the the FND's total time is basically comparable to the just the FD's uh, peeling part. And the, after this work, actually, since it has been two years since it, this one is accepted, we extended this for bipartite networks. We did something along the local algorithms. Uh, how can we compute those stru structures with a local computation in an independent manner? And all the source codes and the papers are available in my website. 
Thank you. You mean the K trust composition with respect to state of that? Uh, yeah, we have results for that. I mean, uh, the Bayes algorithm that we implement is always uh, more efficient than what is proposed in the literature. We have the absolute runtimes for that. So our baseline was that. And on top of that, we uh, implemented hierarchy construction stuff, which was not covered before. Yeah, so, yeah, I know that. Uh, the peeling algorithm, the same thing, starting from the triangle counts start, and the, uh, using a bucket structure to do that in uh, all triangle count time. Yeah, we have the absolute round times in the paper. All right, then let's end the session.